your garden starting on fire. Turns out it's a very real issue, and I didn't realize it until I started watching a TikTok. And I saw siding that was partially melted, all due to a fire that started in a container. And so that, that led me down the rabbit hole of how fires happen in gardens and how many fire hazards I actually have around this place, not including myself, because I am a little bit of a fire bug at times. Depends on the day and how many beer. And just like small sparks can start fires in your garden, Fires in your brain can start with today's sponsor, Brilliant. So if you don't know who Brilliant is, it is an app that is a game-based way to learn. It will help you to spot and identify issues in the real world and then know how to react to them in real time. I've had many Geek Crew members out here that have kids that have been using this app and love it geek crew members who have tried it and also gave me feedback that they loved it. And it's not limited by any stretch of the imagination. This is problem solving, skill building, tactical techniques to help you problem solve day to day. Da data analysis, math, engineering, you name it, it's all included in here. Brilliant helps you understand the systems from the ground upwards. Check out Brilliant at brilliant.org slash gardening in Canada for free and get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Learn anywhere on your phone, your computer, and build real problem solving skills. Thank you so much, Brilliant, for sponsoring today's video. Now let's jump into our first combustion the compost. So yes, compost is awesome for your garden, but it turns out that nitrogen-rich compost in particular can get up to 160 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hot for those in Canadian numbers. I just did the, the conversion, 71 degrees Fahrenheit. 71 degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit. 70, I see I need to use Brilliant more. 71 degrees Celsius. This is warm. Now this heat, in extreme cases, can combust. Yes, and it has been documented, particularly in dry piles. So if you have a compost very rich in newly added nitrogen because you're starting to pull things off of the garden, maybe you're getting ready to start harvesting things and you put a ton of greens in here, make sure you also incorporate some moisture because a dry hot compost is a flaming pile of sheet that is ready to just take off and do its darndest. And mine's right next to my house, wonderfully enough. Ever see the labels on your fertilizer packages that say keep away from extreme heat? Turns out there's a reason for that. It has to do with the fact that fertilizer is incredibly combustible. Terrorists know that and so gardeners should as well because we're basically the equivalent of terrorists most days. Urea, ammonium, nitrate are all great examples of something that will combust in warm extreme circumstances. So you want to keep them away from anything flammable and you also want to keep them cool. That means no more sheds, no more next to the furnace in the garage. We need to put the stuff in the basement, get it out of the greenhouse, because that's where mine is. Just get it somewhere where it's not going to blow up in your face. Next one, oddly enough, is actually containers and more specifically containers that are filled with peat moss, even coconut coir, anything that is organic in nature that is flammable when it is dry. So it turns out that the peat itself is obviously combustible. And this is particularly true when it is exposed to heat and it is dry. Very similar situation to the compost. Now the video that I watched this on, she had it kind of like in a steel bowl. So I think the other takeaway from this is to make sure that no reflective material is being used for the container proper or that there's no reflective material kind of up and around the side. So for example, in the past, I've used a lot of mirrors to help amplify lighting in the greenhouse, for example, that I'm not gonna do anymore because it is definitely combustible and it makes sense that it is. It's just something you don't think would happen. Turns out it does. The other thing to avoid is actually dark containers, black containers in direct sunlight with no shade throughout the day whatsoever. It's another one that you may want to consider avoiding. Now, if you're able to keep that potting soil relatively moist, you actually don't have to worry about this because wet soil is not flammable, obviously. So that is one way that you can avoid it entirely if you do have peat in an area that is potentially going to cause it to be exposed to some of those warmer temps. Aqua globes 
or glass in any capacity. So I've seen several videos at this point through my internet sleuthing, one of which was the aqua globes, another one of which was actually a clear glass water vase type looking container. And then I did see a glass solar lamp. All of these will amplify light and this amplification of light will start anything that is dry on fire. That means dry peat, dry compost, dry mulch, containers made of wood, you name it, could all technically start a fire with something like this. Now this is plastic, so it's not gonna amplify it in the same way, but if this was glass, it's definitely something you wanna watch out for. Some miscellaneous hazards that you may not think about is things like the dry mulch that I'd spoken to, make sure you're always wetting that. Any sort of container, or plastic bag of organic material that is dry and exposed to high levels of heat inside of your greenhouse is another one. And then lastly is going to be wrinkled plastic. Now this one from what I read is simply because the amplification of light or focused light due to wrinkling is what would cause this. I, someone who knows something about the physics of light can probably enlighten us more about. I just know that it was listed several times as a possibility. In my brain though, I think probably not the case, but hey, so be it. And then this one actually is the actual last one. And that is a tiger torch. I use this tiger torch all the time to kill bugs that I don't like and also to kill weeds. And so this is another one that logically, obviously you wanna be careful with. You only want to use it on moist mulch and you don't want to hold it for extended periods of time unless you want your hair to end up like mine. Geek crew, let me know in the comments below if you knew that these are possible that your garden could start on fire and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!